Hi, uh, good morning and uh, welcome all of you. Today, um, today uh, thank you for joining uh, to the show. Today, uh, we are uh, going to have a small talk on positive mindset for workplace. Uh, um, it so happened that I don't have much of uh, uh, many people uh, in the audience. Uh, so I thought I will just record it and just share it with you so that anyone can watch it and make the best use of it. So please wait, uh, let me share my presentation, share my screen with you. And I'm stopping my video. So I welcome you all for my first pep talk. Uh, this is a first pep talk that I'm giving on positive mindset for workplace. Uh, this is not my aspiration to be what I should be, but uh, still this is how it happened. So, and why I am here is uh, because uh, uh, I have always been uh, noted uh, for my positive mindset and especially for people who know a lot about me personally and they have always wanted uh, to know how I am this positive and what drives uh, me to be positive in various situations that I have seen in my life and that ultimately uh, led me um, to think a little more about uh, uh, to introspect a little more about myself and create more self-awareness uh, that I decided to put everything together. And uh, this is uh, one of the first talks. And I hope I have good uh, reception, audiences, um, and good uh, people viewership. I'm going to continue doing it. So before I uh, get into uh, talking about what mindset or uh, what positive mindset is all about, uh, let me differentiate what uh, thinking and what mindset is about. Thinking is the thought process. It is the process uh, by which uh, we uh, uh, process all the information uh, that we gather from uh, our surroundings and what we read, learn, or through different modes we hear, see, and all the information that using which uh, we develop thoughts, we think about it or ponder about it, to make plans, to implement our ideas, debate on which one to accept, which one not to accept, which is uh, uh, trying to find out what is good, what is bad, uh, whether it is good for us or whether it is good for others, uh, and logically reason out whether uh, uh, something is happening, should I move to the right or to the left, or should I move in both the directions? So what am I going to do next? So all these uh, thought processes is called uh, thinking. Whereas uh, mindset is uh, the framework of our brain or the framework of all our thoughts. It's the way we think, the attitude that we show towards others and uh, the attitude we show towards a situation and the programmed uh, beliefs uh, that we develop in ourselves. Like uh, say, for example, uh, what we are going to prioritize uh, the society uh, that we are brought up in, uh, like um, uh, whether we uh, care for environment or whether we prefer using plastics or do we think climate change is utter nonsense or we think, uh, think uh, climate change is everything or we go for ethical veganism or uh, we follow Christian faith or Hindu religion, the judgment that we are going to take, uh, uh, whether we are going to change our opinions or whether we are going to stick on to what our father and mothers are telling or whether we are going to stick on to what our friends are saying or the opinion that we develop for ourselves, uh, that we think I'm the most uh, beautiful bird on this uh, world, like how a peacock thinks. So all this forms the frame set uh, framework of our mind and that is called mindset and uh, talking about mindset what drives our mindset to be uh, working in a particular way is the experience that we have seen in our lives the education that we have gone through for example uh, our schools that where we have studied uh, our colleges we have attended the upbringing uh, that we have to say whether we are brought up in uh, a uh, rural setting or uh, whether we are brought up in uh, urban city or uh, whether we are brought up in a modern mindset or whether we are brought up conventionally or stick on to traditions 
uh, the family that we belong to, whether we are coming from a distant uh, family or a narcissistic parents or uh, whether uh, we are uh, uh, brought up with foster parents uh, or with uh, grandparents, the society that we live for. Uh, um, that is uh, what is uh, the society says, uh, whether it is uh, global or it is uh, uh, locked up into a pool. Uh, uh, say, for example, it says that uh, I am prejudiced only to uh, flock together over my own tribe. All this together uh, forms our mindset and that mindset drives how we interpret a situation, the way we approach a situation and the perception that we develop towards and uh, uh, others and uh, about ourselves and that decides whether our mindset is negative or whether our mindset is positive and we have we know that from all these uh, uh, attitudes or that uh, drives our mindset that mindset is not completely negative or it is not completely positive it is a scale it can move from negativity it can move towards positivity and this side it moves towards uh, the scale uh, depends upon uh, our uh, entire uh, uh, experience, education, upbringing, family, society, and uh, d different uh, situations uh, that uh, tells us how to interpret or approach the situation or perceive the situation. And a positive mindset comes along only with positive thinking. That is why we have to learn to think positively and only when we think positively, we can have a positive mindset. So both are interrelated and uh, we cannot say what drives what, both drives each other. So let's uh, first uh, brainstorm each other. What do you think, having known what positive mindset is all about, or having known what drives mindset and what is it? How different is it from thinking? What qualities drives us to have a positive mindset? So the qualities that drives a positive mindset, from my perspective, are discernment, understanding, and pragmatism. We also need to have some level of resilience. So to provide your answers, uh, please uh, log in anytime at uh, polyv.com. Uh, hyphen Rachel Pradeepa 781 or uh, text your message with the code 60536 to the number 2233. And uh, so uh, I will move further. So what, how does a mindset uh, influences us? Uh, our uh, thinking or uh, how thinking influences our mindset? It drives a thoughts, perception, or approach in a particular manner. For example, most of us believe that only the top scorers or the first benches, as they call those score 90% or more, will be the best brains of the nation and uh, than the last uh, uh, bench people. And that is how most of the uh, institutions are moving towards uh, in making that business today. Uh, but what uh, the former president of our nation, Abdul Kalam, said that the best brains of the nation may be found on the last benches of the classroom. So let us put everything together and uh, the fact is anyone can turn out to be the best brain for the year. For example, most of the top positions are held by the IITs. And of course, the top positions uh, or the many of the uh, leading uh, companies, uh, internet companies, software companies are founded by uh, dropouts of schools and universities. So there is uh, no right, no wrong. So let us keep ourselves open and be more positive. Let us not drive ourselves to be more positive towards the last benches of the classroom. Neither let us uh, take side to the educational institution business propaganda that scoring 90% will make us to be the top um, management people. And uh, being an environmental person, I have added uh, the fact that anyone can turn out to be the best brain for the year. So let us stick on with that. So to understand how to develop a positive mindset, let's watch the movie, The Story of a Salmon. Salmon is just a small fish, but the fish takes a long journey, a journey from sea to fresh water to breed, lay its eggs, hatch, and the fish returns back to the sea. And it happens every year after year. And the journey is not that easy. 
see it has to move upstream and moving upstream is not that easy we will see why is it so Yes, the sun is a kind of fish, and as it was uh, journeying towards the fresh water upstream, uh, it uh, finds obstacles, small blocks that it has to jump over it, and jumping over these rocks is not that easy. And that is how we come across in our lives. We come across failures. So failure is one obstacle that uh, stops us off from being positive. And it is not merely failures that stops us. We find people coming in way of our lives. We find uh, uh, others are stopping us off from growing. We find competition very difficult and we think we may fail. And small emotions stop us from being positive. So what is stopping us from being positive is because we know our goal and moving towards us being positive and stopping air from moving forward because of setbacks, because of failures, uh, because of others coming in our way or because of competition. So these four things that we see in our lives. And when we see them, we should not stagnate. We can learn from this little fish salmon that has a perseverance and it keeps trying. We need to have the grit. Whenever we fail and fall down, we have to get up and try again. We have to keep trying again until we reach our goal. Because we know to reach the goal and we have taken the path knowing well that we have the skills to do it, then why not should we keep on trying? When we keep on persisting, we will see what the 10% of luck that we are in need of and that will come in favor of us and surely we will reach the goal. And it is not all about reaching the goal. It is all about trying. And that is what we learn from the uh, salmon fish. And when the fish can do it, surely even we as human beings, being a social animal, we should be able to do more. And... Uh, Let's see uh, more what happens in our workplace. In our workplace, to move up the ladder, we see we come across hierarchy. We have managers, we have senior managers, uh, we have executive management. And uh, sitting at the bottom, we see a lot of egotism from the top. And we saw a lot of egotism sitting next to us, at the back of us and in front of us. Uh, 
wanting to put us down all the time or trying to create failures. And of course, that is not always the case. We also have peers with whom we enjoy everything and with from whom we can also learn. And that is where our ego is going to be built and how we are going to react when we are going to climb up the ladder, when we become managers, are we going to develop a positive ego or we are going to develop a negative ego? So why a positive ego? A positive ego is when we have climbed up the ladder, uh, ladder and if we know that uh, we have climbed it well, we will have the self-confidence, we will have the self-esteem. We will be optimistic of what we have done or what we are doing. We will have the courage to tell others uh, that uh, we have uh, the skills and uh, we have something to deliver. And even if we are not knowing something, we are uh, able to acknowledge our uh, lacuna or uh, lack of skills or lack of knowledge. And we will be willing to learn. So that is the courage we are going to develop and we are going to believe that people by trying to learn from us are not trying to pull us down. We trust in them and we trust in ourselves and we will keep ourselves open-minded to learn new things and to take in more ideas and to think in a different manner. And that is all about positive ego. Whereas sitting as a manager, if we are going to show a negative ego, we will only land up in doing what is that will do benefit for us, which is called the self-interest. We are not bothered about the team or our team members. As long as it is useful for us, yeah, well, I will take it up. I will do it. The team members are going to work for the manager and the manager is going to have a fear when some team member is going to get smarter and we will be very afraid of them. We will feel insecure about our position. And if someone is going to be very different from us or going to be uh, skillful in something or better than some better in something than us, we will feel jealous and we will not trust them. And we will be having a closed mindset because we decided what we want and we do not want to hear anything else beyond uh, what we think is correct and what our experiences have taught us. And that is the negative ego that we are going to build in ourselves as a manager. So that is how we are going to develop a ego and focus it towards positive thinking. And based on that positive thinking, it will drive us a, a positive mindset or a, this ego can drive a positive mindset so that we will think positively. So let's do some small activity. Today I have three activities right in front of you. A uh, gratitude exercise. The gratitude exercise is uh, to identify three good people in our lives from the past six months. And we have to spot three good things that we have done to others in the past six months. So count people number one, people number two, people number three. And when you count three people whom we think are good, uh, or who have accepted uh, good things about us. And uh, just uh, see what are the three good things that we have done for them. You know, It is uh, first identifying the positive people around us. They are the three good people. And what positivity we have given them. Three positivities that we have given to them. So that is the idea of doing this gratitude exercise. And we can do it every six months, this exercise. It will surely help us. And next is, uh, once we have identified the three good things that or three positive uh, uh, things that we have done to these three positive people around us, let us find what are the strengths in us that have helped us to deliberate this positivity around us. So identifying the strengths will help us to understand the positive ego in us what is driving the positive ego? So now uh, we have done something. We have spotted some strength. We have spotted some positive people in ourselves, uh, around us. So happily, uh, we have relaxed our mind. We have removed most of the negativity from our mind. And so let us take our uh, pen, paper, color pencils, paint. Uh, let us put ourselves into a very good spirit. Our, uh, trigger our imagination. And picturize how we will draw our ego. So what image or picture will you represent your ego as? 
So how we are going to picturize or what are going to be the input of this picture is, what is your goal? What is your motto? What is your deepest desire? How will you achieve it? What can you do or not do to achieve it? What is it that you do not like about yourself? So first, let us try to identify the ego in us and see where we fit on the positive ego to the negative ego scale. So having done this once in six months, we will be able to build our positive mindset or positive ego to drive towards developing positive mindset. So does positivity fail? Is it always good to be positive? This is a very important discussion that we should never forget. We must have it always. Yes, sir. Positivity can fail us. It can lead us to self-deception and denial. We think all are positive around us. We think all of them are being good to us. We will fail to ignore about the small negativities that we spot in other people that we fall easy prey to uh, vandalization or uh, betrayal, backstabbers, gossips, all this uh, that can damage our uh, reputation like microaggressions or gaslighting. So all this, we will deny it from happening and we can shut ourselves. So another uh, bad thing that positivity can do is it will help us uh, to develop a complacency. We will fail to develop uh, 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 um, the attitude uh, to learn. Now we think, okay, I can do it. I have all the skills. Uh, should I need to learn new skills? Anyway, I know there's something about it and I think that is good enough to do it. And we may fail to upskill ourselves or we may turn lethargy and not build the fortress or uh, re-strengthen our positivity. So, or we will not, uh, we will fail to uh, uh, strengthen our uh, resilience, the grit or uh, the muscles that will help us to keep ourselves uh, persevere or move forward or uh, the strength that we need to, uh, to drive us to keep trying again. Now. And when we cannot, when we fail to do that, any disappointment or any grief that strikes us repeatedly back again and again, or it is going to build up because of continuous failures or competition or setbacks or what others are uh, doing to us, then uh, all that is uh, ultimately is going to pent up and result in uh, depression. So uh, too much positivity can also lead to depression. And uh, unwillingness uh, to uh, accept uh, negativity around us or uh, to change uh, um, our paths when we are in need. Uh, like uh, we are not uh, silent, where we do not have uh, another route uh, to rechange the course of our uh, path uh, to reach the goal. As a human social being, we will have many different ways uh, to reach our end goal. And uh, uh, we should be able to know when we should stop uh, uh, persevering, reduce our grit, and take another course. And uh, that is uh, the negativity about uh, positivity. So finally, i like to end my presentation today. You can't go back and change the beginning, but you can start where you are and change the ending. The words from C.S. Louis, the author of uh, Positivity, He's a father of positivity. So we cannot change what we were in the past or how we have grown up. Or, or we cannot uh, change uh, the mindset, but we can develop. We can create new scenarios. We can create new programmed beliefs. We can create uh, new approaches or we can develop a positive mindset and move our positive, move towards a positive uh, mindset, a positive thinking. And uh, I thank you all uh, from uh, for attending, listening to my video today. And I hope uh, uh, you will be interested in uh, learning more or uh, listening more, uh, attending my session so that uh, we can have fun together. Let me know what uh, topics are that you will be interested in or listening to. And I'm happy uh, to consider them. So that's all, folks. I thank you once again. See you next time.